This is The Last Stand Aftermath. Uh, I played the demo for this game earlier this year and absolutely loved it. Um, and now it's out for reals, and guess what? I love it even more. Uh, so if you are into State of Decay 2 and if you're into Hades... This game is somewhere on the spectrum between these two games, uh, and so you will probably love this game if you're into the other two. Uh, it's basically... Uh, I want to kind of give you a primer on it before we get started, because we're actually going to be dropping right into the middle of one of the hardest parts of the game. Um, so the game has got a structure that's a lot like Overland. Uh, you're trying to cross you know, basically take a road trip across the country uh, from your starting point. You, you, you start in this um, in this town that's called, I think it's called The End, uh, where a bunch of survivors are sort of dwindling on, on the edge of life. And uh, you are one member of the town that has become infected and you're inevitably going to die. And so you've been sent on a quest out into the wilderness to try to figure out if there's any kind of escape, any kind of solution. Uh, and, you, and you're willing to do it because you're dying anyway. You might as well put yourself at risk to help your community. So it's got kind of a sort of a noble feel to it, but also a little bit of a fatalistic feel. It, it's a very it's a very dark game, but it's also just a lot of fun. So where I am right now, uh, because it's a roguelike like Hades, um, each character you play inevitably dies, and you sort of you get as far as you can, learn as much as you can, upgrade your community as much as you can. Um, and then you lose that character and you start over again from the beginning with a brand new fresh character. Where we're jumping into the game right now, I've actually, for the very first time, gotten through the first two areas of the game. I've repaired the radio tower and or started up the radio tower. And now I've moved on to the sunken city. And I don't know anything about the sunken city. Uh, so we're going to be discovering this together. What's probably going to happen is I'll get some distance into the sunken city and then die. Uh, and then we're going to go back to the beginning together and see how the cycle of this game works. So let's get into it. The controls of this game and the perspective, it's, it's a top-down brawler slash shooter. Again, a lot like Hades. That's why I make that comparison. So it's not like an over-the-shoulder game like State of Decay. Looks like our mystery voice is very real. Oh, what are you seeing? Some kind of blockade, or I could say nothing I can't handle. Uh, skulls, spikes, and fire. Let's say we're seeing skulls, spikes, and fire. Huh, okay, that's a grim welcome. I'm sure you'll figure it out. I gotta get back to working on this device. Keep me posted. So yeah, you're joining me in media res. So I've cleared the mountains. So I got through the suburbs, got through the mountains, and now I'm in the sunken city. So uh, whenever you get through an area, you gain the ability to skip through it quickly because you'll see at the bottom of the screen um, my health. Uh, the red part is my actual health. The purple part is my infection. Infection reduces your mask's health over time. So you get to the point where there's just no way for you to survive anymore. Um, and so... And I'm out of fuel, so I can't progress until I get more. So I've got several things I want to do. Now, if I hold the left trigger, that shows me roughly where things are. So northwest is where I can find some crafting stations and probably the fuel that I need. But it looks like I'm blocked by a gate. And I've got some... I haven't seen a zombie quite like that one in the upper right corner. Oh, you can't see that zombie. See that zombie in the upper right corner? I'm worried about that zombie. I'm not sure where the best place to stick my head is. I think I'll stick it here. So while I'm crouched, I can sneak around. There isn't like a button for stealth killing zombies though. So once I start fighting, the zombies are gonna hear me kind of regardless. But I've been using my crafting skills to build up these fancy um, bladed fists. So I can do a lot of damage to zombies, which is nice. Uh, you can see in my inventory here. Uh, basically, my, my my tradition is to use all the crappy cheap weapons, like the pocket knife, first. And save up all of my, like, really fancy crafted weapons. So, actually, let's switch to the pocket knife now. Um, because I've only got some smaller zombies over here. So, wait a minute. What is the one with the green glowing neck? Oh! It's got an area attack. Cool. You know what? Come back here. He's moving around a lot. Oh, and it throws things at me? What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've never met these things before. I think I might have some antidote, though. Do I have... Yes, herbal antidote. There. Okay, okay. I'm no longer poisony. Nope. 
Okay, when I see that coming. How much? You move around too much. How much health does this thing have? Okay. So I've seen, um, we, I just saw a much more armored zombie than I've seen before. I also just saw this poison zombie that apparently takes a ton of damage. I don't know how much longer I'm going to last uh, against these enemies. Uh, I'm going to try to heal up real fast. Where do I... Uh, I think I've got... Yes, Herbal Remedy. Use some Herbal, herbal Remedy. But what I really need is to get some antiviral uh, so that my health doesn't keep ticking down forever. Oh, yes, I forgot. I can scavenge zombie bodies to get stuff. All right, so I can't get through that gate. There must be a way... What? So in focus mode, the zombies slow down so you can aim at them, which is very helpful. So focus mode not only shows you where your objectives are. Whoa, I'm deep in the water now. What the? Okay. This zombie is large. It takes so much damage! Okay, so I just completely destroyed an entire pocket knife hitting that zombie. So let's switch to another melee weapon. Get those hand blades back. Um, okay, so I went this way hoping I would find some way to open the gate. But it looks like that's not a thing. Can I go through these tiny little gaps in the fence? I don't think I can. So I can see there's some gas. You can probably barely see it. It's right up there. There's some gas up in that building. So I definitely need to get up in there. The question is how? I'm betting there's some way through this fence on foot. But that before I go anywhere, I'm going to have to crank open that gate. And that's going to attract some attention. At least that's a pretty common way for things to go. Huh. No, I'm at the boundaries of the map here. Am I going to end up feeling foolish for uh, starting in a new area? Oh, what's this? Aha! Okay, so I can sneak under this barrier. Okay, so there is another poison zombie. Let's kill his friends first. I'd like to not wade through water to get to him, if I can help it. Okay. Now let's... Empty a magazine into him. Okay. Cool. Um, I don't have a ton of bullets to spare, but I'm willing to use them on those poison zombies. The crank is missing. Okay, so that symbol, the three skulls, that means that when I do this interaction... It's going to attract zombies. So I gotta be careful. Well, I haven't felt like I needed to be this quiet in a while. These poison zombies have really got me freaked out. I love how the zombies can take damage from my gun, but because they don't know where it's coming from, they just don't do anything about it. So the game has got Gears of War style reloading. One thing, I gotta say though, the fact that I'm so scared of these poison zombies and I'm trying to shoot them from a distance means I'm missing a lot more and I'm wasting way more bullets than I did at the earlier levels. Okay, so each time your infec infection takes down an entire chunk of your health, uh, you get to choose a mutation, which is a great leveling up mechanic for a roguelike. Basically, as you get closer and closer to death, you also get more and more powerful. But it comes at the trade-off against your health. Um... So, okay, I can make myself sneakier. Or 10% damage to undamaged enemies? That's just, that doesn't feel like it's going to make much of a difference. So let's go with stinkiness so that I can be quieter. So look at this zombie outside. Luckily, unlike State of Decay, there's no search crashes. So I can just search as fast as I want. Though, there are interactions that do make noise that you can engage in. Probably easier to just kill that zombie, though, than to do anything else. Um, and now that that zombie's gone, 
I don't feel the same need to be quiet. I don't think there's anything I can do in here short of firing a gun that'll attract the zombies in the next area. So you do have um, inventory restrictions in that um, you take a penalty by carry for carrying too much stuff, but the penalty is just your, your your stamina, your max stamina goes down faster. If you have enough food, you can compensate for that. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, Okay, so I've got this fuel for my car. There are several things that are sort of like rucksacks in Standard Decay 2, where you can carry one at a time on your back. And so this is one of them. So, you, so fuel, and they've also got supplies. Supplies are sort of your long-term upgrade, uh, upgrade uh, resource. And so you can't use supplies in the field. You use supplies... Oh, gosh! For long-term upgrades at home. I didn't realize there were a bunch of more zombies out here. Zombies do spawn in, by the way, while you're not it, while you're not looking at places. So it's entirely possible to clear an area out of zombies, leave and come back, and there's zombies there. Zombies tend to follow you pretty relentlessly, but most of them move slowly. So you can sometimes attract a bunch of zombie attention and then run away, and the zombies will eventually catch up to you, but they'll often take enough time. You don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, so there's some doors you have to choose how to open. So I'm going to kick this one open and make some noise. So that zombie knows I'm here now, but I'm not too worried about it. I've got the hand crank. And so now I have to decide what to do with it. Because I think whenever I use that hand crank on that main gate, it's going to attract not only all the nearby zombies, but also it, it's going to spawn new zombies. And so I think I want to kill all the nearby zombies first before using the hand crank. Luckily, with these fist blades, you can make really short work of zombies. Ooh, we've got a crafting station. That will be helpful. And we got electronics. I'm just running around grabbing as much crap as I can. 45 caliber rounds. That will be helpful. I think that's what I'm firing right now. Okay. I think that's everything. Hello. Yeah, so it is possible to get through a level without killing any zombies if you're sneaky and you don't engage. But when you know you're inevitably going to have to do something loud, you might as well kill everything. So let's go over to the crafting table real quick and see if there's anything we can build that might help us. So the crafting uh, the crafting system is interesting. Whenever you pick up a new thing that you've never used before, um, you can just stick... You, you basically can grab that thing like say, and, and queue it up in the uh, workbench crafting uh, uh, little UI over there. And then you can find out what you can make with it. And once you've made one of those things, it's then added... Oops, I didn't mean to leave like that. It's then added to this list of things you already know how to make. So now I've discovered so many crafting recipes, I usually just use this. Like, for instance, I can use the electronics I picked up and an existing can bomb I already had to make a beeper bomb, which can be helpful. Um, I can also make a Molotov cocktail, which are actually not very effective. I think I may need to get some upgrades before they actually be uh, become useful enough to me. But I can make another can bomb. I can make some bandages. Okay, so I'm fairly well equipped. Let me catch up with the chat real quick before I get myself into huge trouble. Do, 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 do. Oh, so Coalition is suggesting that uh, when, when uh, Jawa Fawa plays this game, he actually sticks his head down between the, um, uh, the health and the resource UI. Uh, that is one option. He also does play with a, with a uh, green screen, though, and... Usually, just for the sake of fewer hassles, um, I don't. Uh, I, 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 I use a green screen when I'm doing the big official uh, streams for, for Undead Labs. But when I'm doing my own stream, I generally avoid try, trying to have to set up the green screen, get all the lighting perfectly right, all the hassles that go with that. I, I usually avoid doing that. So that means I've got a big old rectangle around me wherever I, uh, wherever I go. Okay, so what I really want to do is get rid of that poison zombie. I don't want him coming through. Oh, 
Oh, wait. Was that a poison bloater? That, oops. That might well be a poison bloater. Um, so they've got zombies in this game that are fairly analogous to the Juggernaut, the Feral, and the Bloater, or any of the other freakish zombies that we took inspiration from when, when we put those in State of Decay. Um, and so I tend to, because they don't actually issue formal names for those zombies in the game, I just call them Ferals, Bloaters, and Juggernauts. Um, the community for this game has developed their own internal names for them, but uh, yeah, it's an, uh, I had a discussion about this in one of my State of Decay 2 streams that I did. Uh, which is, you know, when you don't provide the community with a name for something, it does make it difficult for them to talk about it. They'll make up their own words for it. They won't necessarily be words that you like. Uh, so, yeah, so I call them bloaters, juggernauts, and ferals. All right, so, yeah, I think I've cleared out most of the zombies. So, real quick, I want to switch to a melee weapon that can hit mo multiple zombies at once and has plenty of swing room. Uh, sorry, has plenty of durability. So, okay, because when I do this, it's going to attract a bunch of attention. Uh, oh, oh, crap! Really? Well, how is this supposed to work, then? Okay, so it goes faster once I've done it once. Okay. Fine, that works. All right, so my health is really, really low now. Let's see what I've got in my pockets. I got bandages. Let's see if I have time to bandage myself real quick. In fact, I think I might have actually put that in a quick slot. Let me see if I did. Yes, let's do another. Ba Oop, let's do another bandage. It's a different button from the quick slot than it is from uh, from my inventory. All right, so this has been successful-ish. The problem is, I still haven't found any antiviral. So my character is still not doing that great. I'm at about half my normal maximum health. And it's not going to get any easier. So one thing I like about the map is that the shape of the roads is different in each of the areas. So this is the suburbs where I started, which has kind of got these smooth roads. The mountains have got these more jagged roads. And then this, the sunken city has got these very straight roads. So I'm trying to get, I imagine, over here to the Layton City Bridge. And so I get to decide which way I want to go. So if I go this way, there is a store, uh, which you can use it to buy supplies. I actually usually use it to dump supplies so that I can get knowledge, which is one of our long-term upgrade stats. Um, I don't think I see a safe house here anywhere, unfortunately. So this is going to be a safer place. But this is probably more valuable. So I think I'm going to go here. So this will only cost me one fuel, so I'll actually be, you know, uh, ahead of the game a little bit on fuel. And they've got a store here. Uh, kind of an equivalent to, to, to Cash Beaumont, though not quite. He's just somebody in a van down by the river who sells you stuff. All right, another one of those biggins. All right. Huh, Willoughby. Got a former coworker named Willoughby. All right, so oh, so can I take the poisoner down quickly enough with melee? Yes, I can. Okay, I was scared that it would be too scary to fight those in melee, but it looks like if you hit them fast enough, they don't do anything about it. So of course I have to vacuum up every possible item I can see. Though actually, the most important thing in this room is the thing I've been ignoring so far which is this. So I've got a battery in my inventory. You can only carry, uh, basically you're trying to find car batteries uh, as you're going through the game and you've got a limited number of them and you get to spend them on supply drops like this one. So this supply drop, I can either break it open and get the stuff out of the supply drop or I can hold Y to activate the beacon. You'll see the, in the lower left corner that gives me some supply, that 1640 supply that I have. That is spent back at base to upgrade my access to, um, to to good equipment, both in the field and as I'm as I'm starting out with a new character. 
So I usually, since I, since you know, I haven't been playing the game that long, I usually try to index really high on that, because I figure, you know, the chances of me succeeding on one of these early runs is extremely low. And so, since I'm going to die anyway, I might as well send as many upgrades as I possibly can to the other people uh, who come after me. So let's see. Okay, so it looks like most of the really valuable stuff is to the southwest of me. So I could keep exploring every nook and cranny up here. I'm probably not going to find much. So I'm going to head back to the car to drop off this gas. And, okay, there's a bunch of zombies up there. You got some really scary infected zombies up there. Okay, so there is actually something this direction. That kind of surprises me. Oh, of course. We've got the store. Because I've got a lot of bandages, I'm going to just use them at every opportunity. Anything to keep my character marginally alive. Hello. Okay, so a lot of your long-term character upgrades come from knowledge. Uh, you collect knowledge. It's, it's the blue, tr uh, the blue uh, diamond. You collect knowledge by um, finding notes and hard drives and photos. Just anything like that in the world that feels like it's like a cultural artifact gives you knowledge. And you spend those on long-term upgrades to all of your characters. As, as the one character you've got out here is sharing this knowledge back home, they unlock upgrades for everyone. Um, and so you, I can spend the knowledge that I've accumulated. Down there, I've got 70 knowledge. I can spend the knowledge that I've accumulated on, for instance, a suppressor for my rifle. But what I tend to actually do is sell things that I don't need to get knowledge. So right now, I've got all these melee weapons. Like, I can sell the hand blades that have almost run out. Like, who cares? Um, I, I don't know how quickly I'm going to go through my melee weapons. Normally, I might sell a few of these because I wouldn't need them. But I don't know how well I'll be able to replenish them, so I'm nervous. However, uh, I'm not going to need all of these duplicate ranged weapons. So I'm going to sell all the duplicates. And so now I'm up at 80 knowledge, which is nice. And I don't need mo that many extended magazines. I think I might need all of this stuff, so I'll keep that. Um, and, like, I can sell... So bricks can be used to make some of the uh, weapons that I'm using. I don't need six bricks. Um... I never use chem lights to sell them all. Oh, nope, they're out of knowledge now. They can't give me any more. So that's it. That's all I can get out of this guy. Unless I want to buy stuff from him, but I don't. Because I am stingy. Okay, looks like they've noticed me. Oh, crap! I didn't realize I was getting so close to an infestation node. An infection node. That thing is going to possibly kill me right now um sure so yeah i forgot that these purple things watch my infestate my infection just eat my health bar and i don't think there's a, because i don't have any um antiviral i can't stop it it's just gonna keep infecting me oh i hate hitting these things they're so bad they will just they will shor shorten uh, an entire run with just one mistake. Unfortunately, it's been a little while since I've played this, and so I forgot to keep my eyes open for them. I think the intent... See, now I'm down to less than two health pips. This is really bad. I think the intent of the design is for me to recognize what those look like and avoid them in the future. And that's all well meant and all, but... Uh, yeah, it's really easy to just start ignoring pink glow that you see on zombies. And uh, and so if you've got a bunch of zombies clustered around one of those, it's really easy not to think about what it actually is. So unless I can find a place out here that's got some antiviral, I am not long for this world. I do like the zombies that are armored, like, have armor pieces that you knock off, so you can sort of see on their body how much progress you've made. So, one strategy when you're running out of health because of infection is just to rush ahead and 
get as far away from it, you know, get, get as far down the line as you can before you inevitably die. Another strategy is to try to find antiviral, but I'm pretty sure that if there was antiviral here, it would have made a pip in my, uh, in my focus hut. And I don't see one. So I think that I probably don't have that. So since I don't have that, I am going to try to move ahead to the next area and see if I can get some antiviral. Though, seriously, it's just going to take one attack by a particularly scary, scary zombie now to take me down. But that's okay. You know, I mean, I was not expecting to get all the way through this area for on my very first trip. So a military outpost, which has fewer skulls on it, which means fewer zombies, versus the city park. I think I got to go military outpost. It is very likely to have antiviral on site. Uh, Renneth Court asks, uh, if I die and don't spend my knowledge, do I retain it and keep it for my next life? Uh, yes, that your knowledge keeps going up and your supply, basically knowledge and supply, they keep rising uh, until you spend them and uh, they will persist uh, as as you, uh, you know, switch from character to character. Okay, so a bunch of stuff. I think this is the way I want to go. Oh, looks like this little bridge is what I want to take, actually. Okay. Well, that didn't go very well. Luckily, I've got lots and lots of bandages. Alright, let's scavenge from these folks. So... Oh, gosh! What? That's a thing?! Okay, now I know that that's what bubbles mean <laughs> as an underwater zombie. I am discovering so many new things in the sunken city. Um, all right, so this is a Herc outpost. This is a really solid place to get things like antiviral. Oh, he's still his armor on. at the cost of a siege. So, let's try to take out these nearby zombies and let's see if I can survive. I mean, I'm gonna die anyway. If I don't get antiviral soon, I'm gonna die no matter what. So, let's get some of this going on. Let's grab a weapon that's in better shape. Let my gear axe. And let's start this generator. So this is going to attract a bunch of zombies. But I'm ready for them. And once the siege is over... Got some zombies with a lot of health here. Oh crap. No. So this is when it turns from a top-down brawler into a top-down shooter. Alright, I think. I can switch back to my my pistol with the cheaper bullets. Oh crap, screwed up my reload. Let's just shoot all the zombies that are trying to creep on me here. Got some slow boys. Actually, if it's only those three left, I'm probably all right. So let... Oh, those guys coming over the bridge, too. Slow zombies I'm less scared of. So, right over here. So I've been collecting tons and tons of infected blood from scary zombies. And if you get to a Herc station, you can use that to make yourself some antiviral. So I'm going to stab myself in the leg real quick. That turns my, my infection meter gold. Which means it is not going to be progressing on its own anymore. And I think I'm also immune to those, those like infection nodes. So now... 
this is an, uh, a radio where I can spend my knowledge. So basically what, what they're saying is that you're sort of radioing information back home and that's getting upgrades for everybody. So I've so the things with the arrows on them are things I can afford to get. Things like additional stun damage when you're fighting zombies or additional knockdown chance or extra damage with long guns or extra damage while aiming. Uh, a lot. I mean, there's so many things here that feel really, really valuable. Extra XP gain, though I'm not actually sure what XP is for. Um, that's the one upgrade aspect of the game that I have not really learned. Um, healing benefits, I don't feel like I'm ever really starving for those. Action speeds being a little faster might be nice, but starting fuel. This is all about the car. I'm, I'm kind of happy with the car. I could learn how to make a flamethrower. Sure, let's learn how to make a flamethrower. <laughs> so that will be valid at um, crafting sites. I don't know what it requires. So I could find more medical items, more food, more fuel. Again, not feeling the crunch there. I think I probably want some of these fighting benefits. So like increased stun damage to zombies. Seems really valuable. Increased knockdown chance against zombies. Seems really valuable. So let's just, yeah, upgrade that by a ton. And now I'm basically out of knowledge. So we've done that. The zombies are converging. So now I've got one battery they can either spend on the medical box or on the gearbox. Uh, I'm going to spend it on the gearbox. So, oh, I can get a Scar H or a Sports Shot Rifle. Let's see if those are better than what I've already got. So I've been firing an M4A1. Oh, but it, it fires 5.56. Five, These are, I think... The sports shot rifle is also 5.56. Five, and the thing that's nice about the sports shot rifle is it doesn't, it's not locked into full auto. So it's not as wasteful with bullets. So I think I actually prefer the sports shot rifle to the M4A1. But the Scar H might actually be better than both of them. So let's let's queue up the Scar H. I'm going to die soon anyway. So I might as well um, use my uh, fanciest gun. And then let's stick a bunch of upgrades on the Scar H that used to be on my M4A1. So my improvised scope, my rifle muzzle brake. So now I look at that weapon. Yeah, so now I've got a bunch of upgrades on the weapon. So next time I get into one of these fights, I'll be ready with my scar. But first, let's just blast through these zombies. Okay, so my you'll notice that my stamina has now, the maximum has now gone down. Um, that's because every time you exert yourself, especially if you exert yourself with um, too much encumbrance, which is exactly what I've been doing, um, you're not just, you know, you don't just lose your temporary stamina, you also lose your max stamina. It's a lot like State of Decay 2 when you're tired. Um, so I want to, but the way that you recover from it is to eat. So I'm going to eat some canned meat. And now I'm healed up uh, on the stamina side. Now, where else do we want to go? There's a bunch of places to search. I've got enough fuel to leave, and I've got the antiviral that I came for. So maybe that's enough. Okay, I'm going to stay away from those splashes. I could leave right now. But I'm actually really curious what else is here. And again, I'm feeling kind of fatalistic about this run because I hit that inf <laughs> infection node. So part of me is like, oh, maybe I should just look around some more. Of course, oh, and there's, there is some more fuel down there. And the next place I go might be more full of zombies, more intimidating, less opportunities to get stuff. Like, I think I can sneak up on these zombies and loot this container for nothing. And uh, they won't notice me, so that's cool. Oh, wait, can I get through here? Oh, I can. Okay. So this is how I'm going to get to, oh, a grenade. All right, what else is here? A stun grenade. It's the gas that I'm most interested in. Ooh, okay, so we've got another... Okay, so the poison zombie just ran away. So, again, this is another, like, upgrade that I can get, or a, a, a prize that I can get at the cost of a siege. And I think it's worth it, especially because, again, I'm feeling fatalistic about this character's chances. So, 
Oh, crap. One thing, whenever you pick up a new gun in this game, it starts out unloaded. I always forget that. Wow, that scar is powerful. Okay, so let's... So this is the thing that we turned on with that generator. This is going to give me, I believe, access to more supplies. By the way, it just occurred to me... I didn't do an audio test before I started this game. I, I'm hoping that I can be heard easily over the audio. Hello, friend zombie. Okay, so even though this character is kind of in trouble, I think that the amount of supplies that I've gotten are actually really valuable, and so I think this is going to be a worthwhile run either way. Okay, so we'll get this. Is there anything else? Oh, there's some antiviral over here. Yes. Oh, crap, but it probably requires a battery, and I spent the battery on garbage. Dang it! I should not have spent the battery. I already had enough gear. I shouldn't have spent my battery on that red chest inside the Herc thing because I needed it to get my next dose of antiviral. You can see the little um, gold octagon, or little gold circle, I guess, with an octagon around it, um, to the right of my gold bar at the bottom of the screen. It's almost gone, which means I'm about to run out of that antiviral, and I need more. Oh, come on. All right, so I'm going to head back to the car. Is there a shortcut back to the car that doesn't get me soaked? Oh, can, I wonder if I can make... Can I make a flamethrower? Probably not. Ah. Uh, oh, it requires an oil filter and firearm parts. Okay, the oil filters... I, I actually used my oil filters. Oh, crap. That's what's going to kill me right there. I'll use my antidote. I tried to dodge it. Didn't work. Okay. Survived just barely. Not looking great, though. Whew. I love just riding the edge of survival in this game, though. It's great. Okay, that poison is still sitting around there. Oh, crap. Okay, let's go this way. Let's just avoid that poison zombie altogether. There was more fuel down here. Like I'm going to survive long enough to need it, but whatever. But part of me is thinking, like, occasionally zombies will have batteries on their bodies. So I'm thinking it might actually make sense for me to kill these zombies. What is happening? Oh, it's up on, on the table. Let's see, I think you just get infected blood from those guys, but there could be a battery somewhere in here. On a zombie's body. Okay, that was my infection kicking in again. That sound. I've not found a battery. Just the chances of the next place having easy access to antiviral is pretty slim. So I think... My best shot is to hope that I can find a battery out here. But so far, that's not looking good either. Like maybe in this Humvee? Nope. Okay, well, at least I got some more gas. I can go wherever I want next. Oh, and an MRE. Nice. Um, oh, crap. So one of the uh, infection bonuses that I got was the ability to dodge through zombies and knock them down. So that's what that little thundering dodge was just there. Okay, yeah, so I'm pretty sure there's no batteries here. Okay. 
Okay, again, I'm just like ho fruitlessly searching these zombies, hoping I'll find something of value, but no. Okay, so we're going to get in the car, see where we can go next. Hopefully somewhere with antiviral. But this feeling of just like struggling against a clock as, you know, your life is ticking down, it's so it's such a common zombie trope. I just, I love how, how they've implemented it here. Okay, so there's an abandoned compound up there. That might have antiviral at it. There's also a military opposition, but that, that's several things away. This feels like the safest way to go. There's a Herc outpost over there, but it's just so many steps. This takes one gas. I can't see how much gas the later parts of the trip are going to take. That takes two gas. I'm going to go this way. And I might just skip it. I might just skip ahead if it doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot of antiviral available right up front. Wait, this illustration is making me think I might have to fight humans at some point. I've never fought humans in this game. I've only fought zombies. Oh, crap. Okay, 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 hold on. Do I even have any antidote left? I don't. And I'm dead. <laughs> we knew this was going to happen. It's fine. This is a roguelike. This is what it's for. So let's see what happens when you die in this game. Yeah, Lico Alicia, my plan was to go until I died and end the episode there. So, so you pick a vanilla new character. Each of them starts with a different loadout depending on what their background is. So it looks like... I think I like this character's runner loadout the best. So we'll grab her. So these are people. these people are kept in a pen because they're infected. So I'm going to run over here and talk to Trinity. She's sort of the leader of this operation. She's not officially in charge of the community, but she's the one who's sort of running this expedition that I'm on. And now I get to decide what to spend my supply. And I've got 1,840 supply. Yo, you can't see that because of where I am. But, uh, yeah, I've got 1,840 supply. So I can spend that on whatever I want to. So yellow things, the yellow tiles are things that will then go, like, basically a respawning version of that will be available in the supply locker at home before I leave. And so, like, if I, I can have any character can have painkillers, or any character can start with a stun grenade, any character can start with a machete, if I buy this. The red ones are things that drop in the field. Uh, so I don't get them now, but they're unlocked and they start dropping in the field. Uh, so, for instance, I could get a semi-automatic shotgun and a dual drum magazine out there in the field. Um, the blue ones are just doses of knowledge, so I can just basically trade my supply for more of the other long-term... Um, Dealy. Gear insurance I never buy just because uh, you're going to get more gear anyway eventually with the next with the next person. So I think... Ooh, cache of batteries. So you can start with batteries. So a cat. So the green ones, the yellow ones respawn every time. The green ones, they just give you a certain number of something and then you have to decide whether to use them on each character. A cache of batteries does sound pretty valuable. So let's start with some of the long-term stuff. The S12, the dual drum magazine drops. I want to have those out in the field. I'd love to be able to start with a machete. The cache of batteries, like if I know I'm going to be trying to do a really ambitious run, having extra batteries on hand does seem valuable. So I'd like, I think I might grab that as an option, though I'm not going to use it immediately. Let's grab some scrap and painkillers are not that valuable. They're slow acting. I'd rather, maybe I'll spend the rest of this on knowledge or hmm, will I? So these brown ones, these are loadouts uh, that you can get. Basically, new characters can start with different stuff. I don't find this to be all that valuable just because any of this stuff that I start with, I'll be replacing it with stuff that I get in the field almost immediately. And so this doesn't seem like a really valuable thing to spend um, supply on. So I could grab these painkillers. I could grab the knowledge. I can't do both. I don't think I value the painkillers very highly, so I'm going to grab the knowledge. And that's it. That's what I can afford. So let's head over to the Quartermaster, or the Armory. And so the things with the yellow stars, 
these are things that will respawn because I bought them with yellow tiles. And so I'm basically just going to grab everything with a star on it, because why not? Um, I bought these G70 pistols and these batteries. These are consumable. Like, I, if I take them with me, they won't come back. So my character is, I pro is probably already overloaded. Um, let's see if I can actually... Oh, I actually can build something right now. I've, uh, because I got that scrap, I can actually craft some things right here before I go out. And I can make... I could craft myself a war pick out of the melee parts I just made and the pipe that I unlocked. So yeah, so now I can start the game with a fancier melee weapon, but I don't want to. I want to keep the crappier one. So uh, we'll, we've got that for the future, but we're not going to use it right this second. And we're going to get in our car and head out. So that's what happens when you die. You come back here and you basically immediately can spend... This is actually pretty clever. The, the, like, the, like, I like roguelikes where the next thing you do after you die is spend all of the um, resources that you collected during that last trip because that kind of it kind of keeps you going, right? Like, if all of your resources had to be spent in the field, and if you lost them uh, when you when you died, if you lost all, I mean, there's obviously a lot of stuff you lose. You lose your entire inventory when you die, so there is loss. But if there's if there's a few things that you can't lose when you die, that you then get to spend immediately to benefit your next run, that sort of creates this emotional bridge where um, you can, you know, you can, uh, basically, you, you've suffered a loss and you feel bad about the loss, but you also have an opportunity right in front of you to do something cool. All right, so we're beginning a new run, so this is really a good time to, to end the episode, but let me go back over the chat real quick and see if I've lost anything here. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so <laughs> Enigma says that was a little bit unfair the way that poison zombie shot me the moment I got out of the car. Uh, that is true. So I think this game does have the possibility for things to feel pretty unfair because so much of it is just randomly generated. Um, I think that if I had been a better shot, I probably could have done some damage to that thing and maybe prevented it from hitting me uh, a little bit quicker. If I'd realized that I was going to attract its attention immediately, I also could have dodged and run away faster. Uh, so there are things I could have done with some more experience with that enemy that would have made that feel uh, a little bit more fair. Um, and it would have been kind of cool if I had met... And also, if I had been uh, stocking up on antidote. Thing is, I learned how to craft antidote a long time ago, um, and I kept finding it not useful because I hadn't encountered poison zombies yet. And so I, I really, so a, you can see that I had a bunch of other herbal remedies in my inventory. Now, I don't think I'm going to be making those herbal remedies anymore. I think I'm only going to be making the herbal antidotes because I need a lot of them uh, in the late game. Now that I understand that, like if I had had an antidote, I could have used the antidote and saved myself from that poison, but I didn't have one because I hadn't been crafting them. So there, it wasn't entirely unfair. There were things I could have done, and we're, there are things that I will do in the future now that I know to anticipate that. Do, 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 do. All right, see you later, Lily's Apple. Thanks for joining me. And oh yeah, La Coalition is also leaving because uh, he's got an exam. Good luck on your exam. But yeah, I think I'm mostly caught up with the chat. So uh, let me wrap up this episode. So uh, if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'll put a button right there. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit more Last Stand Aftermath so you can see the beginning of the game. Uh, so that's going to be right there. And I'll see you then.